Hi there, my name is Stacey Menzies Toner and I um, am Curriculum Team Lead for the Creative Industries at Murray College UHI and I am also Director of a local arts charity called MADE which stands for Murray Arts Development and Engagement. Um, so today for your transition day I'm going to talk through some of the key skills um, that you will hear more about um, but I'm also going to tell you more about how I have utilise those skills both in a work context and in personal life to show that they can be transferable and that you should um, try to recognise them not only within a professional capacity but also within a personal one. Um, before going on to that, my own journey began at Elgin High School um, which I absolutely adored. It was the old school, not the new build, um, but I loved every single minute of it. I would do it all over again. Um, and I appreciate that um, not everyone loves school, um, but because I loved it so much, I went on to university, um, went to Aberdeen, didn't want to travel too far, and I actually started studying politics and ended up with a degree in art history. So the key learning from that is that just because you pick a course doesn't mean you need to stick with a course if you feel it's not right for you. Um, and I didn't know what I would do with art history, but I loved it and actually finding that passion was probably instrumental in the rest of the choices that I made afterwards. So following university, um, I have moved about for work quite a bit and now I find myself back in Elgin working at Murray College and it's been great to go away and to come back. So starting off looking at creativity, I would say from my experience, um, there's a misinterpretation around what creativity means. It's not necessarily making things. Um, for me, it's a way of thinking and a way of approaching things. So as an example, I always knew that I wanted to work in the arts and in the art sector, but it's very difficult to get in. So I looked at that through a wider lens and looked at culture and came in through the heritage route. So working at Clodden Battlefield, which was my first job after university. And through that, I gained some skills that then allowed me to work within that wider cultural sector and then into the arts. Um, so for me that was creative because I could see the opportunity taking one route that would allow me to transfer back into where I wanted to be at a later date. Um, nowadays um, in some of my work I have to present a lot of information and what I don't like to do is just write a report. So for me creativity comes in with regards to how we share information. So whether that's through infographics or through film, or um, a recent thing we've done is create a tea towel with statistics on it. And that means it's something that's usable um, and people can engage with, but um, is more exciting than just reading a report with numbers and information. Um, secondly, employability. So for me, employability, really encompasses all of the skills that we'll talk about, but for me, employability is about being authentic and about being you. I found that even when I went for jobs in the past, even if I haven't had all of the skill sets that they've asked for, if I've been honest about that and I've said, yes, I can do A, B and C, but I can't do D, E and F, it makes you um, come across as honest, um, aware, so for me, that's that's being employable, is being open and honest um, about what you can bring to the table, um, but also about what you might need a bit of help with. Um, with regards to self-management, I think the biggest example I have was, was when I went back to study. So as I said, I studied art history to start with, and then I realized I needed to go back to study for a master's degree, which is the higher level if I wanted to grow my career and, and work my way up the ladder. So I went back to Newcastle University to do a master's in arts education. And during that time, I studied part time, so over two years instead of one. And I also worked a job in a different city and lived in a different city. Um, I also took up opportunities for volunteering in galleries, um, again in another city. So managing all of those things with studying essentially meant that I needed to really look at my diary, I needed to work out my time, I needed to work out money, um, 
and I needed to find a balance between priorities. You know, there were times I was studying far too much and I wasn't seeing friends and family and other times where um, I was working too much because I needed money. So that time going back to study really taught me about balance and about um, self-management in quite a, a disciplined and organised way. Now, teamwork, I think teamwork comes into play every single day. Um, and an example I would use is probably at home, having two dogs, and it takes me and my partner and a lot of teamwork to make sure that they are looked after and amongst everything that we're doing for work and whatever else. So um, whether that be one of us doing a walk in the morning and one at night, or you know discussing feeds or you know if they've got the groomers and all this stuff it sounds like tiny things but actually I couldn't do it without him and I don't think he could do it without me um, so having that response that shared responsibility really makes us work as a team um, okay communication so again like teamwork I feel that communication plays a role every day not just in a professional capacity, but one area of communication I think that's really important to look at is um, social media and digital communication. So I use social media for work, both for college work and for MAID. Um, so those are very much professional front-facing capacities. So um, platforms from which the public will see what we're up to. So I need to think very carefully about what we put on there and how we're, we're communicated because whatever I do say or whatever images we put up is a direct representation of an organisation or an institution, it's not me. Um, on the opposite side, I have my own social media, so I have my own Facebook, my own Instagram um, and I, I do tend to keep those very, very private and I make that distinction. And I think that's just something to be aware of in the context of communication is thinking very carefully around how you use social media, how you're portrayed on social media and to be kind on social media because it's very easy to jump and to say, some, to say something behind a screen when you can't get that initial reaction from someone else but um, it doesn't mean that there isn't a reaction. So. That's my key advice with communication skills is that it's a brilliant, brilliant tool for sharing information, for keeping in contact with friends and family, for sharing exciting news. But on the other side, just think about how what you're putting on there is perceived by others. Um, okay, thinking. So thinking again, everyday life. Um, but what I would say is for MAID, which is the arts charity, I always need to be thinking about the next step where is it going? So even when we have projects running, um, I'm already three steps ahead thinking about what we'll be doing in three months time, six months time, a year's time, because it takes that long to plan things. So um, if you're interested in administration, coordination um, and community projects, I would say that thinking is very much key because you need to be ahead of the game um, with what you're already doing. Okay, interpersonal skills. Um, interpersonal skills are so important. I think it, it also ties into what we were saying about employability and being authentic. I think that if you're warm, if you're approachable, I think you make people feel comfortable. Um, and one example of that has been a recent project that we've done in Keith. Um, so we were looking to work with a group of older ladies who wanted to extend their membership to a local club um, and they meet for lunch and they do crafts and, and, and other leisurely activities and it took a good few meetings with me directly to talk over what we might do to make them feel comfortable about stepping out of their comfort zone and trying something different with an artist and you know it was over that tea and cake that the ladies really warmed to some of the ideas and really came forward with enthusiasm for what we had planned to do. Um, and I would say that that's interpersonal skills. So if you are looking at a job in working with people, um, I think that is something to be aware of and to work on. So whether that's um, picking up the phone in a friendly voice or um, making the time to talk someone through any worries 
all of that is time well spent. Um, and yeah, it's, it's actually a great characteristic to have in and outside of work. And last but not least, um, leadership. And I think that more commonly people think about leadership um, in a work sense, but actually I can see leadership um, from personal experience through my friendship groups. So I would say that I'm really lucky. I still have, I have lots of pockets of friends from having moved in, moved about and from having studied, but I still have a core group of friends that I met through Elgin High School and um, we talk daily if not weekly and I would say that there's eight or nine of us and we're all very very different and at different points we all showcase different leadership skills so whether that is organising the group for a day out in Inverness or whether it is organising a birthday party for one of the children and then all of the children getting there and managing to get there or um, you know organising the girls for a Christmas meal around Christmas time. Um, so those are all leadership skills. They're not all necessarily um, being the head of an organisation or being um, the top of an institution. Think about leadership skills and how you um, become a leader in everyday situations because that will send you in good stead for when you do move into the workplace. So I hope that has shed a little bit of light on how those different skills can manifest themselves in different ways and um, best of luck with your transition up to Elgin High School and I hope you love it as much as I did.